Okay. We're now, right? Yeah, it looks like we're better now. I swear to God. And I, you know, that happened to me today, too. I was uh, doing a um, commentary track uh, on um, uh, an issue of Batman. And I totally forgot to turn it around. So it's like you... You end up posting a video, it uploads, it takes a long time to upload, and then you realize that it's in portrait mode, and you can fix it, but that takes another hour. <laughs> so, the first hour that the video is live, uh, people are getting frustrated that it's just in uh, portrait mode, so. Uh, I'm doing good. Oh, this is much better, I can read you guys without craning my neck. This works a lot better to me. Yeah, they are annoying. YouTube fixes, I mean. Set it to private, fix, then public. Hmm. The other thing that's happening to me, guys, is my videos come out, like, immediately demonetized. Um, they're just like, oh, well, YouTube um, assumes that this content is not ad-friendly. Let me tell you something. There's nothing more advertising-friendly than my content. I have to go in and like um, manually tell them to watch the video and, and uh, monetize it. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, the first like thousand views, I don't think I'm getting paid for because it's not demonetized or it's demonetized. Uh, let's see, EVS, can you give a shout out that I am posting my Avengers retrospective number one issue after this? Uh, okay, wait. So Captain Frugal is going to do a video. Uh, he's got an Avengers retrospective issue number one video. I think you should go check that out. He's, uh, he's a good guy. Like, in terms of uh, comic knowledge and everything, he I mean, that guy knows his stuff. So maybe you should check him out. EVS, do you ever use a light box? Um, yeah, rarely, though. Very rarely. Uh, cause it's, it's like more trouble than it's worth. You know, there are times, and I talked about it, um, uh, maybe more light. Um, yeah, it's weird, right? I need like, I need spotlights in my office. I need to get like just the bat signal or something like that. Crazy. I don't know. That's the best I can do. That's all the light I have. Homage to Todd McFarlane? Yeah, I mean, everything. Like, whenever I'm drawing a, a guy who's creepy and who has a spider-like kind of body, and I, I don't mean Spider-Man-like, I mean literally like long limbs, um, and strange proportions, like Scarecrow, uh, I do think about Todd McFarlane, and I thought about him today, I placed a bid on eBay for Amazing Spider-Man number 301, which I don't have, yeah, spindly is a good word, I don't have 301, I have 300, I have 302, I was missing 301, so I had to go get a copy of that, I hope I win. Uh, the live video you did yesterday, is that up on YouTube? I was telling my friend today um, about the connecting covers that you showed yesterday. Uh, Miklos, no, you know, I, I'm, I swear, I try so hard, I mean, I mean to let those things go, but they suck. I can't imagine posting live videos that just stay on... Uh, my page, and I was talking to Andrea about it, and she's like, well, what you need to do is you need to be, you need to carefully read the name of the person who's asking a question, read the question aloud, and then answer it, and that's the only way that, you know, one of those live videos would be worth re-watching, and so I'm going to try to do that, you know, I'm going to try to just be, um, uh, you know, uh, careful about making sure that the videos are rewatchable. They don't meet my standards. I can't, I can't just leave them there. I mean, even some of my older videos now, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm getting iffy about them. I'll leave them because, you know, they're, they're okay, but live videos. 
Um, yeah, uh, most people leave their uh, live streams up. They get good views. Uh, they get good views. Um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of complaints that I'm, I'm tearing them down. And Andrew was saying, well, do you still have them? No, they're gone. Like, if you don't, if you don't let YouTube upload them, if you hit delete, uh, then they're gone for good. So, uh, you know. I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. I don't think I made a mistake, though. I think it's good. But I'll, I'll, I'll post this one because it's actually relevant. Like, I'm, I'm drawing. And uh, that's, you know, a good reason to uh, post a video. Well, here's the thing about Scarecrow, guys. Uh... Like, uh, he's a skull, like, he's a, he's a skeleton wrapped in, uh, I don't know, like, all kinds of weird gauze and burlap. He's a, he's a disgusting dude. I don't want to even, like, I want my scarecrow to be so weird that, like, you can't imagine what's underneath, um, the burlap. Like, it, it what, what does Jonathan Crane look like, like? I don't want, like, I don't want people to actually know. I want them to be like, well, I can't imagine. He's so weird. Like, there's no way that's a human being under there. Um, yeah. Uh, and that, oh, um, Umbrella Guy says, your, um, your Scarecrow in Dawnbreaker was nice. Very spindly. Thank you. And that, that was like a young Scarecrow. I just figured he was, you know, a younger man in that issue probably tw in his 20s um let's see ethan what's your favorite tv show um uh, okay my favorite tv show of all time is twin peaks and um but you know um i'm uh, i'm watching walking dead again i you know walking dead is weird like um the past three seasons have been excellent uh the first season was good but then there was like there were like two or three seasons in between that were really bad. I mean, really, really bad, and I almost lost faith. Uh, but they've been um, pretty compelling, even for someone like me who's a big fan of uh, the comics, and I kind of know what's coming. You know, it's like um, that sequence of Rick saying, you know, like uh, I've chosen grace over or mercy over rage or vengeance. Everybody's like, what did he mean by that? Well, we know what he meant by that, because we, we read the comic. Um, Rox M says, EVS, what did you think of the new season of Twin Peaks? Uh, I loved it with all of my heart. Uh, I miss it. I was very sad. I felt empty and lonely when it was over. Uh, we loved Twin Peaks, the new season, and we're just, we're praying, we're hoping, and it seems likely that, um, uh, uh, that, uh, he'll actually do another season of Twin Peaks. It just seems like it's going to take three years, but there will be a fourth season just because this one was a success and he seemed to enjoy himself and everybody wants to do it. So I hope so. If you could steal, a, Joe the Koala says, if you could steal a writer or artist from Marvel and bring them to DC, who would it be? Um, well, I don't, honestly, uh, see, that's the wrong question for me. Like, that would be a question for an editor. I don't want any more competition. Like, I, I look at my fellow pros as sharks swimming around. And, you know, it's like, I hope they'll go away so that I can have good jobs. <laughs> I don't want to bring good people over to DC. I'm, they're they're going to do it anyway, but because that's what DC does. But uh, no, they can all go away, so I can do the stuff that I want to do. Um, Recon X, Ethan, do you listen to music while drawing, or do you prefer quiet? Um, I watch YouTube videos. That's what I do. Lately, it's just all YouTube. Hmm. And I love it. I mean, that's why I have a YouTube channel. What size pen am I using? Ask James Smith. Uh, here you go. It's okay. It's a Copic. It's the 003. The 0.03. Um, which is uh, the finest tip. And I'm telling you, it's great. 
It's really good. Uh, what kind of videos? Um, I watch Comic Story and I, I watch a lot of comic book related videos. Uh, I watch some political videos, but not as many as I used to. Uh, stuff about the news, and then I'll watch conspiracy videos about The Shining, um, actually Twin Peaks theories. Um, I'll watch um, old historical footage of John F. Kennedy giving speeches, stuff like that. Oh, oh, also uh, atomic bomb tests and atomic scare films. I love those. And uh, drive-in movie theater. See, I watch a lot of YouTube. Drive-in movie theater trailers. Yeah, Ethan TV. I love driving movie theater trailers. Like, I miss that. I wish that... I don't know. I feel like I wish I was... I was um, it was the like, 1950s, late 50s, early 60s. That's when I would like to live. Because I think the TV was so good. And the celebrities, the movie stars were giants. Um, giants really strode the earth. They walked the earth in that time period. Um, hello, Ethan. In one of your future drawings, could you do Cyborg Superman? James asks me. Sure. Yeah. I don't like Bonanza. I've never watched it. I could draw Pennywise, I guess. Yeah, I'm just in that kind of a mood. I like I wanna for one thing I always wanna draw horror stuff. But um, you know, right now especially um Halloween. Halloween's almost over, it makes me mad. I don't think I watched very much very many horror movies at all. I'm just glad Walking Dead is back on. Uh, let's see. Scroll backwards. Chris Cruz asks, EVS, did you play Injustice 2? Yeah, they sent me a copy of Injustice 2. Because Atrocitus is in it. And uh, I did play it. It was a lot of fun. I don't have a lot of time to play video games, so I wish I did. If my YouTube channel blows up and I'm like um, PewDiePie, I will. So tell your friends. Say, um... Ethan needs a million subs so he can play video games all day. I will. <laughs> How many subs do you need to have in order to do nothing but play video games all day? I would say a million. I don't know. That'd be cool. Right now I play zero video games, except at Christmas time I bust out my favorite old games. Um, and up, like the whole week in between Christmas and New Year's. I play um, Dead Rising on the Xbox 360, Dead Rising 1 and 2. And I live in that mall and in that casino. I live there. People are telling me I need to be on um, Twitch. Uh, I, you know, I'm always just behind. Like, I just got this YouTube channel. And I'm, I'm, it's just starting to kind of pick up momentum and... Now I gotta stop and go to the next thing. I don't know. Favorite horror monster is the Wolfman. Always. I always wanted to be a werewolf. When I was a kid, I, uh, re like, went into the school library and I took out all these books on the occult. And there were all these books that told you how to become a werewolf. Like, sell your soul. I can't believe these. I was in, like, the fifth grade. And I'm checking out books about selling my soul to the devil so I could be a werewolf. And also, um, they had, they told you how um, you might be a werewolf. Like, you have werewolf tendencies if this finger and this finger are the same length. I didn't see The Monster Squad. I never saw that movie. Yeah, I w they said, here's what you had to do. You had to cover yourself in, like, goat fat. 
and you had to um, make a circle of salt and burn candles in it and then stand in that circle naked like covered in like goat fat and um, pledge your soul to the devil to become a wolf and um, no I have not finished 1922 yet I haven't had a chance yeah I never got to I you know it seemed like, like my I, w I was into it in spirit, but I, I don't know. I never actually did it. I really wanted to be a werewolf, though, because I couldn't be the Incredible Hulk. A werewolf is the next best thing. It's basically the same thing. Like, the Incredible Hulk is kind of like a werewolf, in a way, except he doesn't turn into a wolf. And he doesn't crave human flesh. Like, I, I didn't think... Um, uh, yeah, I know, I know, but it was in the library and it was written for children. Like, it was written at my reading level. So that's why it was crazy. Um, yeah, I didn't want to eat human flesh. I just wanted to run around and go rah, like that and growl. I wanted to um, scare people. I don't know. I wanted to just be like, I have a wolf inside me. And it comes out at inopportune times. And I can't control it. I can't control the wolf. That was my uh, childhood fantasy. That's why I'm a comic book artist. Is it edgy? I, you know. Like, I didn't see it that way as a kid. I just thought it was cool. Now, like, you know, I see it as pretty dark. Pretty dark. Uh, no, I had a, st a strict Mormon upbringing. I'm sure uh, uh, Dixon Comics will like to hear that. I was raised a Mormon and still wanted to be a, a werewolf. Yeah, it's just it's just the thing to be. I, I really think that Lou Ferrigno Hulk TV show warped me. You know, the idea of just being like, Rah! and then your clothes, like your shirt ripping, and you know, the monster just coming out. Like that was that was so cool. I still think that's cool. Maybe I would do it. Maybe I'm gonna try it. <laughs> I probably would have gotten it wrong as a kid. I won't get it wrong as an adult. <sighs> You know, uh, diversity, inclusion, and uh, compassion and kindness in comics. I hate saying that name. I could just call you Dixon Comics. Uh, I have a, I'm a supporter of your channel. And uh, I think that, you know, um, you should be roasted properly. And nobody will do it. Nobody wants to take you seriously. I wish somebody would roast you. But they all think you're putting on an act. I'm like, no, nah, I think that's really him. I think that's how he is. I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to roast anyone. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not out to make people feel bad. That's not. That's not my place. Yeah, I know. D uh, listen, Dixon Comics. I know. I know you are. He said, "I'm the real thing." I know. Roast him with kindness. Alright, I will. I will. Um, I will roast him with kindness. Dixon Comics, I'm, I am I believe your name is Cecil. Or Cyril. I can't remember which one. It's one of the two. It's a pretty cool name. Um, I'm worried about your health. I want you to uh, continue to work out. Cecil, okay. Uh, I want you to continue to exercise. I want you to watch your diet, though. I want you to uh, get yourself into shape. Um, I know you're trying. It's hard. It's really hard. Kicking that addiction to sugar is is a big deal. It's it's um, you know uh, sugar is way more addictive. Uh, I don't I don't want to raise YouTube views through drama. Sorry, um, but um, sugar is very very addictive. So you have to learn to replace it with um, fruit for a little while, natural sources of sugar. Um, I used watermelon. I used to just have watermelons all the time. And I, the thing about a watermelon is that you can um, uh, 
go ahead and uh, gorge on a watermelon. Just go buy a watermelon, and if you're one of these guys who likes to overeat like me, you can just cut that thing in half and take a whole half of that watermelon, stick a spoon in it, and eat until, you know, it's mostly water. Sugar and water. And uh, it will fill you up. <laughs> Cutting down desserts to four a day. I don't know. Maybe they're right. Maybe you're not real. Umbrella guy. Thank you very much for that um, diaper money. Thanks for the fan support. Please do a how to draw scarecrow. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know, this time I'm going to just draw it in front of you guys and I'm going to give it away to whoever I like the best. So far, you're in the lead because that was, that was very nice. Um, and, uh, you know, then I'll do a how to um, later. Rebel Lee says, Are you working out now, Ethan? No, I'm actually in decline right now. I'm not working out. I'm getting fat because I'm drawing so much. Like, all I do is draw. And uh, there are times when I really get into it working out and I, I cut down uh, really slim. Uh, but right now I'm, I'm gaining and I shouldn't be gaining because my, my wedding is coming up. I gotta get on that treadmill and run. I love to run. Yeah. Favorite drink while drawing? Water. Um, do you find it hard to work out because of your work? Here's the thing about exercising. I, I love to exercise. I love to I hire personal trainers and everything. I really like myself when I'm exercising. And I enjoy it. Uh, I don't want to draw when I'm exercising. I don't want to. This requires a lot of just planning your rear end in a seat and just staying there for hours. And when you're active and when you're being active, you're just jittery. Like, I don't want to sit here. I don't want to do this. I want to be out there, you know, playing basketball or something. And I don't want to sit in this chair. So when I'm not working very hard, uh, you know, if I were to do another big project that I was going to take my time on and, and not worry about money too much, I would probably get in shape. I'd get in shape real, um, real quickly. Uh, but at the moment, you know, I'm sitting here. My goal is to be a monthly comic book artist. Uh, no, I've never spilled water on a drawing by accident. Console. Hua. Hua. That's how to pronounce that word in uh, New Jersey. Hua. It's two syllables. <clears throat> I, I haven't seen Scarecrow on Gotham Underground Geek. But yeah, you know, listen. Getting in shape is important. I don't know. I'll probably get into shape before I start touring to comic shows again so I can look good. Like Andrea, um, I, I, here's the thing. I love, Andrea and I like to just go clothes shopping for when we're um, doing conventions. We wear all new clothes and it's really fun. Hey dude, what happened to your last podcast? Asked Diego Camacho. See, I'm, gonna, I'm getting a lot of crap for this from everyone. Uh, Diego, I deleted it. I didn't want to post it. I just thought it was junk. And not that, you know, my uh, interactions with you guys are junk. Uh, they're not. It's just that who wants to listen to that again? It's just, it was spur of the moment. And uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Senpai noticed you, that's right. Um, there were some juicy details in there. Yeah. No, that wasn't why. I tell you guys, you know, that stuff's all going to go in uh, regular um, videos anyway. Videos that are, are better produced. But, you know, if you guys have questions, I mean, feel free to ask. There's a lot of crazy uh, comic book stuff. Yeah, I should. I would like to actually, at some point, if this channel develops more of an identity, make t-shirts. You know? Um, 
since we've got Scarecrow, what was your childhood fear? Um, falling out of a window. Basically. Falling. Um, yeah. EVS, Rock M asks, do you tend to draw from foreground to background? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's just, I don't know any way to do it. I don't know why you would draw starting with the background. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, when I'm, when I'm really, um, when I have angels on my shoulder and I'm drawing really, really well, you know, it's like the foreground kind of informs uh, things about the background. They, they interact with each other. And uh, it's, you know, it's all inspired. I don't want to draw Booster Gold, Mr. Um, you, you Are the Cancer. I don't want to draw him. I don't like Booster Gold. I don't. I don't like him that much. He's one of these characters. Him and, and Blue Beetle, I'm just kind of like, meh. Like, I, I, I was never into them. They seem silly to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> and they, I think DC's tried to get me to draw them a couple of times, and I've been like, nah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, if I really thought about them, I could get into it, I guess. But I'm just, you know, it's not something I'm naturally interested in. I know. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would prefer um, Jaime, uh, um, Blue Beetle to, um, the old one. Yeah, Blue Devil would be cool. Yeah, the new Blue Beetle is a pretty good design. I would be interested in Aquaman. Yes, Jacobus. I, I like Aquaman. I, and, um, I've gotten to do, uh, two covers with him. And they were good. Um, I have a whole different kind of attitude about Aquaman than I think other people do. Um, I wouldn't want to do necessarily this incarnation of him. I don't know. Maybe it's too late. Maybe it's too late to do Aquaman. Because uh, he's so set in his ways. Like, I really see him as more of a kind of Tarzan character underwater. Like, just, uh, you know, it would be a much darker book. If I were if I were drawing Aquaman, and I'm not sure people want that. Like this, the Jeff Johns version of Aquaman really kind of caught on. I think. Um, would you be involved in that? I don't. I don't. I have no plans to be involved in any of those right now. Yeah, I just got my new assignments, and they did not include anything on action or detective. Which is too bad. I, w I wish I could contribute to those books. But I, I really feel like, you know, you need to have um, been there for a little while. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't stick around on Batman or Superman for very long. I'm not really entitled to get to be a part of those books. Like, if they did a, um, a Green Lantern number 1,000, yeah, I would have to do that. I would have to. And if I wasn't invited, I'd invite myself. Uh, Mark Santos asks, EVS, have you ever been to the Cincinnati Comic Expo? Do you know if you'll go next year in September? It would be great to meet you and get your signature of Sky Renation for Life. Uh, Mark, I, I don't think I've been to Cincinnati Comic Expo, but I'd be happy to go. And uh, if they invited me, um, I would certainly consider it. I um, I think next year I'll be traveling a little bit more. And, you know, um, my son goes to school in Ohio. He'll still be there. So, yeah. Uh, I would love to go to Japan, I think. I chickened out of going to China, though. 
Wizard went to China, and I, I was supposed to go with them, and I chickened out at the last minute. Because I was just like, I don't know, like, we're going to be there for 10 days without, you know, like, our cell phones won't work, I won't have access to knowing what's going on at home, my family. I don't think I can do it. And I have no regrets either, I, I'm, I don't care that I didn't go. Oh, and you had to get some weird diplomatic permission or something like that. You had to get someone to recommend you. It's a pain in the butt. Ten days without Wi-Fi. Ten days without rights. That's interesting. Uh, Nathan asks, what kind of liner are you using? Uh, an 003 SP. Brand new. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, I would like to have said that I'd been to China, uh, but I don't really want to go. On the other hand, I went to South Africa uh, in 2010 and loved it. And I still think about South Africa all the time. Like, I close my eyes and I'm still there and, you know, walked right up to a giraffe. Uh, mother and a, a, a young giraffe eating from the tray. I walk right up to them. You, you drive around in certain areas of South Africa, they're just, there's a rhinoceros rock walking around by the side of the road. So cool. Yes, have you ever been to Baltimore Comic Con? Uh, yeah, I, I was there uh, two years ago. It was the last time I saw Darwin Cook. He was funny as hell. Hmm. What is this here about Mormonism? Waffle Davy, no one will tell me if Mormonism is about Native American angels. Um, no. Is it? Kinda. In a way, I guess. I don't know. It's it's not... Uh, Mormonism is kind of a, an underscoring of Christianity, but it, it takes it to another level, where um, uh, Mormons believe that um, Jesus Christ, in spirit form, okay... Uh, after he uh, was resurrected, I, so I guess he wasn't a spirit, but he visited the people of the Americas um, and filled them in. And so that, that's kind of what Mormonism is broadly about. But it's just, it's it's Christianity, but exceedingly detailed. Um, they have answers for everything. Well, what happens to, to people who didn't ever hear of Jesus Christ before they died. Like, does that mean they go to hell? No, they don't. You have to get baptized for them on their behalf. Stuff like that. Didn't they massacre white people in South South Africa? I don't know. Yeah, sacred plates and magic pajamas. Well, not pajamas, it's just undergarments. They're like, um, I wore them for about a year, so I know what they are, and it's just, they're like boxer briefs and, uh, undershirt, and supposedly they're to, they're there to remind you of the commitments you made to God in the temple, so you're always thinking about it, because you're always, the closest thing to your skin, your body is this, uh, um, you know, these undergarments, and you're not supposed to talk about them either. <laughs> Somehow, like, normies found out about it and have been teasing Mormons relentlessly ever since. Uh, yeah, Mormon, Mormon women are beautiful. EVS, would you ever do an image or a valiant book? Has ever anyone ever approached you? Nobody's ever approached me to draw a valiant book. Uh, image, on the other hand, I had a whole meeting with them, with Robert Kirkman and Eric Larson. Me and David Finch were gonna, we were gonna unionize and go work at Image. Well, go work somewhere, and we took a meeting with Image about it, and they were interested. So actually, um, before Robert Kirkman had a TV show, I had a nice dinner with him, where I, wherein I told him that he should have a TV show, and he agreed and told me that HBO was looking into it. So HBO was actually gonna do Walking Dead for a little while. Stupid idiots that they didn't do it. 
Um, ooh, you, could you draw kiss? No, I don't like kiss. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I'm honest with you guys. I'm. I'm not gonna pretend I like something I don't like. I'm not that kind of fanboy. I'm not a fake fanboy. Ethan, if nostalgia and criticism mess. Ethan, if I sold my soul to the devil to give you werewolf powers, can you? Can I win that power girl from robot? Uh, you have it. It's yours. I need your address. <laughs> you need to send me that address of yours. Um, yeah. Fox wanted it, but they didn't want the walkers in it. That's smart. Did you see Book of Mormon or is that verboten? Um, here's the thing. I, I'm not a practicing Mormon, but my family, a lot of my family is, and they take it very seriously, and they're good people. I mean, you know, it's just... So, you know, out of respect to them, I would feel uncomfortable going to see Book of Mormon, even though those guys are very funny. And, um, you know, I probably would laugh my head off. And I think that it seems to me, based on some of the work that I've seen Trey and Matt do, um, they grew up around a lot of Mormons because they, they understand the Mormon church better than other people do. And... Um, uh, you know, and think, and they seem to reference it a lot in South Park. Uh, but no, I don't. I'm not into teasing the Mormon Church. I, you know, it's just not. It's too close to home. And and because I know so many good people. Yeah, you know, mostly good people. Uh, yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is hilarious. The Book of Mormon play. Um. Robert Wright says being a relig being religious doesn't necessarily mean being a bad person. Yeah, I'd say that's an understatement, Robert. I'd say being religious probably means you're you're trying to be a good person. In fact, um, you know we all try. We're all trying. You know we're here on on Earth trying to develop a code of ethics, and uh, and also deal with the idea of death. I don't want to get that deep, um, but you know some people. Some people don't want to deal with death directly. They don't want to deal with, you know, something that feels meaningless in life. And uh, religion's good. Who cares? Leave people alone with their beliefs. It does like if you're if you're an atheist, it doesn't matter. Like, then nothing matters, really, except for being a good person here on earth. And a good person doesn't tease religious people. <laughs> Yeah. If you're an atheist and the, and it's true that like nothing happens after death, then what does it matter? Like these people are never going to know they're wrong and it won't matter. And you'll never know you were right. We all just blink out of existence. Oh man, Doug Ernst. What that guy's an inspiration. I missed his comment if he said something. How far oh, there he is. Hola friend. Oh he didn't say anything. Maybe he did, I'm scrolling back more. Eh, can't find it. Never mind. Hi Doug. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, someone said that death um, without God is, is just like, you know, before you were born. You don't, you know, you don't remember the year 1758. It doesn't matter that you missed it. it. Just, you know, you have no feelings about it. Ethan, I said earlier that I had a ton of Mormon interns at my old job and they were all very hard workers and good people. Yeah, they're industrious and most of them are wealthy. Like... Like, all the Mormons I knew growing up really were kind of well off. And you have to be if you're going to have eight kids. And they all have big families. I don't know if there's some kind of, like, Mormon mafia <laughs> that sees to your success. If there is, it certainly doesn't exist in comics. But still, I managed to find my way. Hmm. Uh, be an ethical person. I don't care whether someone believes in a deity. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Just be nice. 
Just be nice to each other. Stop telling each other what to do and what to believe. It's not so hard. I personally don't know that if there's a God, I hope there is. I wish I believed. Like, I wish I believed. Like, I wish I knew. I shouldn't say believe. I said I wish I knew that there was a God, like, in my heart the way Christians do. Like, good Christians. Because if I knew there was a God, if I believed with all my heart, I'd be a lot happier. And I'm happy now, but I would be even happier. And not, like, you know, bad things that happen to me, like tr like struggles in life wouldn't matter. Just wouldn't matter. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Marshall Harrison, guitarist, um, says, uh, and wow, boy, is your name a guitarist name, isn't it? Is that your real name? Um, but if you believe anything without evidence, that can lead to real world problems. Uh, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't know if believing in life after death could lead to real world problems necessarily. In some cases, it can. I think that if... Uh, if you believe that your just reward after you die is to live in heaven, as long as you're good, as long as you're a good person, I don't know how that can go wrong. Um, I don't know. There are no absolutes about that. You know, it's like you said, can, like can lead to problems, but I don't know if you need to have proof to believe in ever in and like anything necessarily. I think sometimes you do. Sometimes you just intuit things. Yeah, you know, you, you can know something without having proof. And I think people who believe in God have that same kind of thing. <clears throat> I don't have a favorite European comic. Uh, I don't really read anything except for American comics. I'm very, like, old school. Like, I, you know, I'll read stuff that is coming out of DC and sometimes Marvel. And, uh, but mostly what I want to be reading is I want to be reading Golden and Silver Age um, comics. No, not really. I mean, I've read some Judge Dredd, but, and it's good, but I don't, I don't, you know, I wouldn't read it regularly. I just read it to say, hey, I want to know a little bit about this. Favorite horror titles on in comics? It's got to be Walking Dead, and that's it. I don't, you know. I feel like um most horror people, most horror, most horror stuff is crap. Like it's just not good. I mean, when you find something like Twenty Eight Days, Twenty Eight Weeks Later, and it's actually legitimately like good, uh, it's so rare that you have to just cherish it and hold on to it with both hands. Most horror sucks. It's just, uh, especially modern horror, it's just loud noises and jump scares and gore and and hatefulness. So many of these horror movies are just hateful. Uh, you know, it, they tried to remake Poltergeist. And Poltergeist is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen in my life. And they tried to remake it. And what did they do? I mean, they just turned it into crap. Why does Poltergeist work? Poltergeist works because um, you actually care about the family. They seem real. Uh, they take the time in that movie to very realistically um, show you what each member of that family is like. And it doesn't seem scripted. It actually seems improvised like a, a good Steven Spielberg movie does. I know Toby Hooper helped out, but I'll tell you, that movie is, um, is Spielberg all the way through with people just talking naturally like they did in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, no set, like, dialogue. It just felt like it flowed. So when bad things started happening to them, and they were believable, weird, spooky bad things, they, they didn't seem like they came out of a CGI, you know, program. Um, they seemed natural and, and strange and uh, kind of real. Uh, you were really concerned for them. 
And, you know, that's why that movie worked. Of course, the whole movie was ripped off of an episode of The Twilight Zone. Um, which is strange. I, I was watching all The Twilight Zones, and there's an episode called Little Girl Lost. And I'm telling you, if you watch that episode, it's, it's poltergeist. All of it's poltergeist. Yeah, I like that little old um, small person lady, too. I thought she was funny. No, oh, we're still we're still talking about faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's right, Victor. God bless people with faith. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thel, Thel Wazaru, Wazaru, um, asks, uh, "Have you seen the new It movie, Ethan? It was so loud it hurt my ears. I had to cover my ears the whole time. Without the loud noises, it wasn't even scary anymore. I haven't seen it yet, and that worries me that you say that." Because everyone was saying it was good. I was hoping it was actually good. And I was going to wait for the DVD. Uh, I like the original It. Like the first two thirds of it. The TV movie are pretty scary in places. Ethan. Uh, Jellyfish Sandwich asks. Ethan. How do you make decisions about which shapes to start with. In building a character drawing. And how to progress from there. This tends to be my biggest problem. Uh, in drawing things from my head. Um. Mm. How do you answer that question? Well, I mean, look, it's just a matter of building the drawing from uh, an impression that you have. You need to kind of be able to picture it first. You need to say, what am I trying to do here? And then you need to do your best to throw together uh, the right shapes at the right angles to, to make it happen. And look at look at these pencils. I mean, they're not... There, I'm not even keeping these legs down here because this crotch should be way down here. So this isn't even right necessarily. You just need to, um, you know, uh, work something out and then build it as you go, which is kind of what I'm doing here. I have a rough idea of a design and I'm building it as I go. Uh, EVS, ta uh, Nathan asks, Tales from the Dark Side or Monsters? I didn't see Monsters. I do know Tales from the Dark Side really well. And uh, that was a creepy show. I don't think it would hold up, though. I don't think it would hold up if I tried to watch it today. Uh, but in the 80s, it was pretty scary. Uh, Army of Darkness? Uh, yeah, I like that movie. Tales from the Crypt is okay. It just it's a little trashy. That's my only complaint. Like I feel trashy when I watch it. It's like creep show is just a little bit meh. A little bit icky. Uh it, it suffers a lot from the that horror thing where the characters all hate each other and they're horrible people. And so many of those plots, like the characters are just terrible people. They're nasty to each other and then bad things happen to them, and who cares? Uh, Epa Rocky PA Rock says Jeepers Creepers yeah the first half of that movie was excellent 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 first half second half when you find out it's a monster mm, I wanted it to be uh, a person doing really bad things that would have been way better because it was believable up until then they ruined it Wolf Creek, again, more cruelty. Those uh, torture porn movies that came out 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they were all about cruelty, and I, I don't like it. I'd watch them, I watched them all. But, like, I couldn't, I, I was sick to my stomach with worry for those people. And, you know. Carl P. says, EVS, I had an artist who didn't like to draw. Uh, when I asked him to draw, what I asked him to draw, so I started doing a page, just page descriptions, and he loved it. What do you prefer, just breakdowns, uh, uh, page breakdown, or panel by panel? Carl, I'll do it any way that uh, people ask. I mean, I'm not, I don't have a preference. My, here's what I need. I, I need information. I need my writer to tell me exactly 
uh, ground the, the scene for me. Uh, if there are extra characters around, if possible, please tell me what they're feeling or what their motivations are. Um, I can figure it out. I don't want to, but I mean, on my own, but I could be wrong. Uh, and I don't want to have characters uh, kind of expressing the wrong facial expressions and, and you know, stuff like that. So I need to know those types of things. And then tell me about the background where this all takes place. And we will be cool. Um, I mean, this is my job and it's been my job my whole life. So I'm... I'm really cool as ice, guys. I, 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 I there's not a lot. I, I don't need anything um, to do my job. Uh, but yeah, what I would prefer is a writer who, uh, who gives you uh, information. Mm. You're as cold as ice. That's right. Yes, how do you go about handling inking mistakes? Ooh, good question. Dun, 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 dun. That Presto um, whiteout pen uh, is great. Really, really good. And you can actually use it for effects too. I mean, you know, uh, I'll, I'll put lightning in the sky or I'll streak it very carefully and make pretty realistic rain. Is it quiet tonight? Does it seem quiet to you guys? I don't see a lot of YouTube stuff going on. Last night was really busy. Did I used to vandalize furniture at school? No, I never would. I was a good boy. I would get in trouble from time to time, but it wasn't for just... I don't know. I, I didn't want to hurt anyone. I did hurt someone, though. Shot an old lady in the neck. Forgot about that. Oh, thanks, Matt, for that super chat. That's very nice. Yeah. I shot an old lady in the neck. She's bleeding. Yeah, it wasn't good. Oh, you want to know how I shot the old lady in the neck? Uh, no, it wasn't a BB gun. It was a paper clip. Um, so, you know, we were Jersey boys. We were poor and stupid, you know. And uh, one of my friends took a paper clip, okay? He did a paper clip, and he'd take a pair of pliers cut the paper clip right in half, right down the middle. And when you do that, you get three metal U shapes, okay? So then you take eight rubber bands, tie them around this finger and this finger here, and you have a slingshot. You put the U shape right in there, pull it back, whoa, boom, okay? Oh, wow. Hey, thank you, uh, Dixon Comics, I appreciate it. World Series is on and I'm watching a draw. All right, well. I do appreciate the super chat. Thank you. Um, anyway, so we uh, would go up into my uh, bedroom, which had a big kind of bay window overlooking the street. It was in the attic. And we would shoot these paper clips all down, up and down the street. Uh, sh you know, somebody like, shoot that squirrel. Well, luckily, we never hit a squirrel. Um, but these things would go fast and far and hard, and they would embed themselves in trees. They were like a, they were like a bullet. And um, the old lady across the street was getting out of her car. We didn't like her. And my friend said, Ethan, 
take a shot. And I'll tell you, I, I was like, ah, all right. I didn't think I was really going to hit her, you know. I didn't. I was like, I haven't hit anything else. Boom, right in the neck, right in the corner of the neck. She's holding her neck, screaming. Blood is spurting everywhere. Cops came. And uh, my mom had to explain. Pow, right in the kisser. Hey, welcome, Nurkish. Uh, your arch foe is here, Dixon Comics. He just uh, tipped me $10. So uh, he's, he's on my good side. <laughs> yeah, um, it was bad. And they, uh, the cops came and, and they said, have you been shooting paper clips up and down the street? We're like, a few. And he opened his hands, like, and he had, his whole palm was full of, like, paper clips. Some were rusty, uh, you know, some were new, so it was clear that we'd been doing this for days, you know. It wasn't good. And that old lady died of her injury. Took me a long time to forgive myself. I'm just kidding. She didn't die. She was fine. <laughs> took me a long time. Took me weeks to forgive myself for killing that old lady. Mm. Well, it's accidental. I mean, it's not murder. It's It would be manslaughter. Like, I, I didn't intend to kill her. Murder is, like, intentional, isn't it? I didn't intend for her to die. Like, a good lawyer would have been able to argue me out of that situation. My dad was a lawyer. Not a good one, though. But it was weird, like, the cops, did, you know, came over and yelled, and uh, my mom just basically said, you know, I'll handle this. And the cops were like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, like, I didn't get in any trouble. and Not any trouble at all. My mom said, what are you doing? Wildcard Productions, EVS, when will you draw Rogue and Jean Grey? Uh, I don't know. Why, why am I drawing Rogue and Jean Grey? I guess I'll draw them someday. I mean, the thing is, like, listen, we're, I, I plan on maintaining this channel and, and doing one of these sketch-ups every day, every night. Until people stop coming, and then I'll stop doing them. So, eventually, there has to be a Jean Grey or a Rogue, I guess. I guess. There's no reason for me to draw Rogue. I, I've never drawn Rogue in my life. Never tried. She's not in my wheelhouse. Bobby Drake asks, EVS, can I get one for my 18th birthday? Get one what? A drawing, oh. I don't know, Bobby Drake. These things are all about luck and timing. You never know. Composite Superman. Who else have I killed? Uh, are you comfy? All right, let's go through a list. I, I it's terrible. But, you know, the strange thing about it is, is that, you know, uh, my dad did, had to admit he did the same thing when he was my age. Um, oh, thank you, Jellyfish Sandwich, for that super chat. I appreciate that. Thanks for the lessons picked up Flash and H. Uh, Al Jordan today. Um, yeah, I mean, my dad did the same thing when he was a kid. He had a BB gun or a pellet gun, and he, you know, was 
kind of Lee Harvey Oswald, the, the neighbor off his toilet across the street. Like he, he sat there and he, he shot him from out his window. The dude was, was pooping with his bathroom window open. My dad shot him right off the toilet. Imagine that. Imagine you're, you know, you're just trying to have your private moment in the bathroom and suddenly you're, um, you get hit with a pellet and you're bleeding and you don't know why. And then you see the open window and the neighbor kid. That's malicious. You know, why? Why do you do that as a boy? I don't know, just to see if you can hit him. Like, it's not, it's not like you don't mean to be uh, malicious about it. It's just like, I wonder if I can hit that dude. Like, I wonder, am I that skilled? And really, you're testing your own skills more than anything else. You're testing your own skills. My dad found his skill set to be adequate. So did I. So did I. Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald didn't hit anyone, says Elric. Well, he did. He hit JFK. Twice. Twice. And he wasn't a good shot either, but he did do that. He did kill the president. Elric says, debate me, Ethan. Okay, I'll debate you. Go. Hit me with your best shot, so to speak. Do, 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 do. How's the scarecrow looking? I hope he looks okay to you guys. Ooh. No nitrates on cheek, no shot. Oh, well. Well, that doesn't explain the plethora of other information implicating him in shooting the president with that gun, including the fact that his prints, his palm prints were found on the rifle, the fact that the gun belonged to him, that the gun was in his garage, uh, in his neighbor's garage where he kept it, the fact that it wasn't there the next morning, the fact that it was traced back to him, the fact that he slept at his neighbor's house uh, the night before ostensibly to get the gun, the fact that he was seen bringing a package um, into the uh, into the place that he worked that the president was shot from. He was seen actually carrying a package that size into the building. Uh, the fact that he was known to be on the floor at the time of the shooting um, and the fact that after the shooting was over and we knew that the shooting came from the school book depository, he was the one employee that hoofed it out of there. He wasn't around to be counted. Everyone else was. He fled, showing clear, clear guilty motivation. So uh, it doesn't matter that uh, ostensibly there was no nitrate on his cheek. He did it. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing about these conspiracies, though. It, it's like, um, you know, uh, you know, one piece of like one one thing doesn't kind of override the avalanche of other information and, and evidence. It just doesn't. You got one little thing there, and I'm sure it's easily explained away. Um, Oswald did it, my friend. All right, what else? There, There's far more than one little thing. All right, well, hit me with some more. So far, I just... You gave me one thing, and I gave you 50 things that prove that he did it. I mean, just the fact that he ran, that he fled from the scene. Just that fact alone. Okay, so the rifle belonged to him. JFK was murdered from that spot in the building where he was, where his co-workers saw him, where co-workers below him actually heard him shooting. And um, he left, he fled. And then he shot a cop who was approaching him. Shot and killed a cop. Why would he do that? <laughs> Why would you shoot a cop if you didn't do anything?
the rifle was crap. That is true. People say, you know, uh, how could he have been so good? Like, his rifle was a mess. How could he hit the president three times? Well, look, I mean, he, he, he didn't hit him three times. He hit him twice, and he missed. He missed two of those shots. The first shot, he missed the car entirely. The second shot, I mean, he's aiming for JFK's head. He misses it. He hits him in the neck. And then the third time, finally, he hits him not dead center in the head, but on the side of the back of the head. So he was a bad shot. You're right. But, you know, he did get it done. Man of action. Yeah, you could. He did it. And people are saying, you, you couldn't do that. It's impossible. Well, yeah, but he did. It's the same kind of thing as, like, fire doesn't melt steel. Well, it does. That's not what would happen if airplanes hit a, the World Trade Center. Well, we just watched it happen, so apparently that is what would happen. And Oswald was clearly guilty. Um... There was just way too much evidence against him. Um, yes, I'm drawing this scarecrow for one of you, actually. Bolt action, no sight. Wrong, he had a sight. The trees were in front of the book building. That's fine. The, his, the car was not obscured when it was on the straightaway away from the building when he fired the gun. The trees were not blocking uh, the car. Um, and the car, when he said that's not correct man of action not correct the the car was actually on um a slight incline and the tree did not block the uh view people ask why he didn't shoot before he turned um because he was waiting once the car was on a straightaway walking away actually tracking it on your rifle scope which was misaligned but which he had practiced with so he had adjusted for that misalignment um you're basically holding the rifle perfectly still and just lifting it just a little tiny bit to track the car. It was a great shot. It was an easy shot. I think I could have made it. I tried. I failed. Yeah, Connolly was hit as well. Uh, that one bullet, the first shot, went through Jack's neck. And didn't hit any bone uh, in Jack. It passed right through him like it would pass through soft tissue. And entered the back of uh, Governor Connolly. Which is the only thing that it could do. Mm. Yeah, somebody asked, do you ever play uh, JFK Reloaded? Yeah, you, if you play JFK Reloaded... You will see that, um, you know, when the car is pulling away from you, uh, the shot is very easy to make. Very easy to make. Uh, who is this drawing for? It's for one of you. I'm trying to decide who it's going to be. Somebody asked me if I seriously played JFK Reloaded. Yes. Uh, me and Billy Tucci played it together once. It was, you know, it's interesting. It's not a tasteful game, but uh, it it teaches you. It really does actually teach you that it wasn't impossible, and uh, it was very possible. In fact, kind of easy. In fact. Sorry, I, we don't have to talk about the assassination. I don't know why it's we're even talking about it. <laughs> Who's my favorite writer or artist to hang out with? Billy Tucci is my favorite to hang out with. That guy is so fun. When someone asks you about the assassination, ask them about Jackie. Okay, what about Jackie? What about her? All right, one more thing. Elric 
says, Ethan, one last thing. USMC sniper trainer Carlos Hathcock said it was impossible and they tried to recreate it. Um, Jackie thought Johnson did it. Well, Jackie was wrong. Um, we have tons of evidence that Lee Harvey Oswald did it, not Johnson. There's zero evidence that he did it and lots that Lee Harvey Oswald did it. Carlos Hathcock was also wrong. It wasn't impossible. It was very possible because Lee Harvey Oswald showed that it was possible. Um, anyone who says it's impossible. Here's the thing. When they talk about recreating it, you know, it's, it's, it's tricky language. What they mean is you have to go up there and you have to hit JFK in the same exact spot that Lee Harvey Oswald did. Same exact two spots that he did at the same moment. That's recreating it. And that's a billion times tougher than just trying your best and accidentally hitting those two spots, which is what Oswald did. So people who talk about, oh, that nobody's been able to recreate it, they're lying to you. They're, they're using tricky language to fool you. No, I couldn't, I couldn't hit the exact spot that Lee Harvey Oswald did, but I'll bet I could kill, uh, I could score a kill shot. Right? I mean, that's, that's what it is. These people are just, I don't know. They use this deceptive language. Oh, Ellie, I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm fine. <laughs> don't draw angry. But it's one of these subjects that I know a bit about. I know a little bit about it. How do you feel about the moon landing? <laughs> Well, don't ask me how I feel about the moon landing. I'm not a conspiracy guy. I'm trying to demonstrate that I, I don't believe in conspiracies. Uh, the moon landing was 100% real. I watched it happen. <laughs> well... If you do believe in the Kennedy assassination, I do recommend that you read not Gerald Posner. That book's okay, but it's 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 convincing, but it's not the best one out there. Um, the best the best book that disproves every single JFK assassination and does it with logic, pure logic and facts, um, is the one by Vincent Bugliosi, and it, it's a yeah that's right reclaiming history. Uh, it will. Uh, if you still believe in a conspiracy after that, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's it's really devastating to conspiracy people. And that's the guy who convicted Charles Manson. And by the way, I'm not necessarily sure Charles Manson, you know, should have gone to jail um, legally. I don't, I don't know that he killed anyone. Um, but Vincent Bugliosi was able to put him in jail. This is actually pretty, this is pretty good Halloween conversation, though. Somebody just asked me about um, Bigfoot. How do you explain Bigfoot, then? I don't know. Comic enthusiast. Do you like Christmas or Halloween better? I like Christmas the best. Obviously, but you know what, like... To me, guys, I don't know how you guys feel, but as soon as Halloween is over, it's already Christmas. Like, November 1st starts Christmas season, and Thanksgiving is just, like, pre-Christmas. If you live in America, if you don't live in America, Thanksgiving is uh, a big feast. Where you just say, oh, I'm grateful for everything I have. Thank goodness. Let's, let's have a turkey. But Thanksgiving is the beginning of Christmas. And, you know, you can do anything Christmassy in the month of November that you want. You go to the Rockettes Christmas show. That's what we do in New York City. Have you ever drawn Scarecrow in any comic before? This is one of the best. Well, uh, yeah, I, he was just in Dawnbreaker briefly. Other than that, not really. I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you approve. I'm here to entertain you.
Best Thanksgiving movie. Is there a Thanksgiving movie? I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, do you believe in werewolves or UFOs? No and no. I don't believe in anything like that, really. I believe in the laws of the natural universe. Oh yeah, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving movie. Sure. I don't believe in ghosts either. <laughs> 